There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves. My heart becomes free. Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I. Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and everybody be glad in it. Absolutely. My goodness. We we wait all winter for a day like today, don't we? Special welcome to visitors and guests who are here this morning. We're thankful for your presence. Please make yourselves at home as you get to know more about peace. Uh, there are people around you who are members here. Just ask them questions if you would like. And uh, if I can be of any help, I'd love to do that as well. Uh, in addition, too, I want to draw reference to this card that we've been putting in the worship services. Uh, uh, on one side, it says, let's get better acquainted. And for anyone who wants to know more about peace or talk to us about belonging to peace and being a member here or the like, uh, just fill that out and just leave it in the offering plate as you go or hand it to an usher or myself. Uh, and that's a way for us to get connected with you. Uh, we're looking for in June to have a new member uh, Sunday. And so uh, please, if you're interested in that, just let me know and we'd gladly talk to you all about it. On the back side, you'll find a prayer request. And uh, we have a list of people that we're praying for in here. You can call the church office and tell them about a prayer concern, or you could put their name on here and just any of the details you want to share. But we'd gladly pray for people in need. And so please uh, put that as well in the offering plate or hand it to one of the ushers. A few announcements to be made this morning. One has to do with Vacation Bible School. And there is a child here this morning, a young person, yes. a student, 
I have Miss Addison here. Uh, you guys, I made the announcement last week, and I figure you're tired of hearing from old people make the VBS announcements. So I have some questions here for Miss Addison. Addison, is this your first year attending VBS? Do you like VBS? Yes. And what is your favorite part of VBS? Out of, out of all of the rotations, what is your favorite part? Crafts. Crafts with Miss Sean. That's not surprising. <laughs> and what are, what's another favorite of yours? Um, snacks. The snacks are pretty amazing as well. And is the music a lot of fun? Yes. And the missions? Yes. And the Bible studies, right? Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you this. You're all signed up this year for VBS, right? Yes, and did you invite a friend? No. Ooh, okay. Well, do you think it would be a lot more fun if you invited a friend? Yes. Yes, and do you think all of these kids should get signed up right away and invite a friend? Yes. Thank you very much. Get those kids signed up. <laughs> <laughs> and you can sign up by going at the Peace Lutheran website and register your students, your children, uh, right there. Other announcements this morning? Mark. Yep. All right. Uh, sure, we'll grab it. it makes me feel kind of like a... Just rip it out of the kid's rock. arms. <laughs> Just give it. All right. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, two things I wanted to share about quick. Um, first, you see up on the screens, um, on June 9th, um, we are having our peace or our youth summer kickoff, um, and with that, we are doing um, everyone's favorite event, the Ag Olympics. Um, would if you don't know what that is, think Olympics, but you're cover, covered in egg yolk. Um, it's a great time. It's really fun. Um, so we're doing that June 9th um, from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, we're going to have food there, I believe, Chick Fil A. Yes, I'm getting the nod from. Uh, Mrs. Chick-fil-A, uh, that yes, <laughs> there will be Chick-fil-A there. Um, so we're going to have some chicken, play some games, um, and just hang out. This one's for um, kids grades 6 through 12. And this is also, since it's kind of the start of the summer, this is the day that 5th graders, you get to become 6th graders and start coming to you stuff. Um, so, woo, moving on up. Should we try it again? More excitement? <laughs> no? We're good? <laughs> uh, the one other thing I wanted to share about, well, with that, um, sometime this week I'll be sending out um, just a summer schedule. We're, we're going to have stuff throughout the summer for kids to do. Um, and it's just kind of a starting thing. I'm sure we'll add stuff as it goes. Um, the one other thing, I'm going to jump ahead in the service because I actually need to run out this morning, but it is teacher appreciation um, Sunday and so I just want to say thank you so much to I'm going to look around and probably miss people but Sean and Jess and who am I missing Olivia and Ella have helped a bunch um, Megan where oh there you are there you are um, and there's so many other people I mean Joseph has filled in a bunch um, Gladys who is in here has filled in a bunch um, but as, as the youth director, it was, I kind of came into this job expecting like, oh my gosh, I have to build a Sunday school program and I have to find all these teachers. And I walked in and they're, they're like, we've already got a whole group of people who love to volunteer and love to teach and are phenomenal at it. Um, and so it's been so amazing this year watching you guys serve our kids and love our kids. Um, and that's the biggest thing is all of these teachers, I can tell all you guys, um, they do this not because someone begged them to, but they do it because they love the kids of peace um, and love telling them about Jesus. So um, before you think later in the service, I just really wanted to, from me, say thank you um, so much to all of you guys. So that's thank all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. On June 4th, we are delivering pineapples again. Right. And we deliver pineapples to new people in the community, um, to Delano, St. Bonnie, Watertown, and Mayer. So if you would be interested, we give you your addresses, and you even if you can only deliver two pineapples, that helps a lot. So we have over 40 pineapples to deliver, so we would love your help. And Thank we have you. pickup from 4 to 6 on Friday, June 4th. 
Okay, and see you after the service if yep. they want to hook up. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, with the holiday weekend coming up, uh, I know people will be out and about, and I hope wherever you go, <clears throat> you'll find a Memorial Day service to go to. And I just want to plug the American Legion Watertown here, and their Memorial Day service will be downtown Watertown at the city center park at 9 o'clock on Memorial Day. And it will be a short service, but uh, it's not as long as when we have it up at the Performing Arts Center, which we can't go into yet. Maybe ne next year we'll be there, but it will be downtown city center park, 9 o'clock Memorial Day. Thanks. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Anyone else have an announcement to be made this morning? Okay. I have a quick one. Wait, I heard a voice from I above. Um, I believe John Peterson and is going to be help. We're going to be planting right after church kids. So all my Sunday school kids, preschool through fifth, um, meet us outside the front door. Okay, does just outside the front door. Yeah, does that, does that sound about right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, meet us there. So, yeah. All right, thanks. That sounds good. Thank you for that. Yeah, this, uh, this is pretty exciting. We're going to kick off our fall theme, uh, Keep Faith Growing. Uh, and one of the visuals that we have of that are some uh, garden uh, boxes that are out on our lawn. And uh, they're going to be planting some plants in them today. And John Peterson has uh, uh, the jam this morning. And so this is a, a historic occasion. Yeah. <laughs> um, just one other announcement I want to make this morning is that uh, we partner with our other churches in our community, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, we share announcements with them about activities that we have, and then we do uh, their announcements as well. And so St. Peter's over here uh, is going to have May Fest, and they're going to be having a big celebration today. If you have some, would like to go, it's a fabulous, uh, fun day with good food and music. And then in addition, if you have a motorcycle or a bicycle, either one, uh, you could join us up at Immaculate Conception for a, a blessing of the bikes. And it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. Father Jim and uh, Father Pete from St. Bonnie uh, will be there and myself. And uh, we're trying not to get hurt. So uh, it'll be a, a good day. Uh, okay. That's all the announcements to be made for this morning. I want to invite you to stand, if you would, because we're going to sing our Pentecost hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Let's join our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this glorious day. We thank you for our time of worship where we can turn our hearts towards you and where we can lift our voices in prayer and praise. We ask today, Lord, that your Holy Spirit now would be amongst us and guide us in our thoughts and our words and help us to love as you have loved us. In your name we pray. Amen. Please share the peace. Let's join in singing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. join together in the confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God, 
and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We invite the children to come forward, please. We'll try. boys and girls. How are we all doing? Good. My name is John Peterson and today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about food and we're going to talk about keeping our faith growing. So with summertime coming, how many of you guys like to eat? How many of you guys like good stuff to eat? What do you like? Huh? Cheeseburgers. All right. I like what do, you, what do you put on a cheeseburger? That'll weigh. What else? Cheese. What else? All right, the hamburger part. Yep. How about pickles? No, you don't like pickles. All right, boys and girls. How about pizza? Is pizza good year round? Yeah. What's that red stuff on there? Pepperoni. What, what else? What's the other? What's the red stuff? Huh? Tomato sauce. All right, Carver, you might have been spoiling something. Well, we're going to have some fun here. All right, inside my ba- or my picnic basket, I have a few things we're going to talk about. First of all, Kale. what you guys already know, what do we call this guy? Tomato. You guys eat tomatoes? I thought it was tomato. Carver, no. <laughs> tomatoes any good? They're no good, he says. You guys eat tomatoes? All right. Oh, all right. Well, you might destroy some of your days. How many of you guys like ketchup? This makes this. You guys going, oh, boy. Now, what other good things do you think we have in here? No, no tomato sauce. What's this guy? Cucumber. God, you guys are smart. All right. What do we make out of cucumbers? You are getting the million dollar prize. What's the million dollar prize? God loves us. That's the million dollar prize. So he's right. Cucumbers make pickles, right? See? Is that good? All right. All right. Now, boys and girls, who eats these guys? Bunny, you're right. Is there a famous bunny that eats them? Huh? Huh? The Easter Bunny probably does, but when, when I was a little kid, we had a guy named Bugs Bunny. Have you ever heard of Bugs Bunny? Addison, you ever hear of Bugs Bunny? Is he, is he a funny guy? Huh? Yeah. All right. You're having fun here. All right, boys and girls. So here's what we got. We showed you some vegetables. We've talked about some food. Now, where does all of this stuff come from? Where do we get it from? Huh? That's God. From God, absolutely. The ground. So, how many of you guys have been on a farm? Been on a farm? Raise your hand. You been on a farm? No. Okay. What sweet? What do you want to see? What's in there? There's more stuff in there. This is a green pepper. It's good stuff. All right, you sit right here. Come on up here and sit, because you're going to be a helper. All right. So we know that all our food comes from God, right? How big are farms? Are they big? Huge. Exactly. You guys been to a farm? What color tractors are on that farm? Oh, no. You didn't see a tractor? Back away. Are they all green? How about red? Okay. All right. So, boys and girls, you guys did a wonderful job. We're getting close here. 
you like that? <laughs> okay, so the stewardship committee has came up with an idea. And like Pastor David said earlier, what they want to do is we have five boxes out here by the road, and we want to grow some vegetables this summer. We want to grow tomatoes, green peppers, cucumbers, carrots, and one other thing that you guys, let's see if you know what this is. What's this guy? Watermelon. Now, we have an opportunity to grow a watermelon that might weigh 200 pounds. What do you think? Should we do that? All right. <laughs> we'll try to grow it. So after church today, we want you guys to come on all over here, and we're going to have you help us plant. And we have four other fellows that are going to help us, Bob Rickenberg, Nathan Wentland, uh, Henry Hartzell, and Jacob Baum, or excuse me, and uh, Dan Belke is going to come and help us. Okay? So over the summer now, when you guys come to church, we need you to come by, and you need to look at our garden. You need to maybe water the garden with us, and as we get into the summertime, we'll get more on that. Now, we just talked about food. There's one other point. We've got to share a story with you, and it's about a toothpick. Okay? Now, there was a little fella many years ago by the name of Hody, and Hody lived in the hills of North Carolina. Now, Hody was about eight years old, and what he did is he always had a toothpick in his mouth. He liked toothpicks. Well, he had a bunch of them in his pocket, and one day he fell down. He fell down in the garden area, and he didn't think anything of it, but the toothpicks went all over. He didn't pick them all up. At least he thought he didn't. Well, the winter time came, and his mom said, Hody, you need to go outside, and you need to find us some wood. we got to have some wood to burn so we can have a meal and we can stay warm. Well, Hody, he thought, well, hmm, I wonder where I'm going to find some wood. Well, he went back out to the garden where he fell down earlier, and lo and behold, there was some logs that grew. Now, we were kind of thinking, just having some fun, should we put some toothpicks in our boxes and see if anything happens over the fall and the summer? Yeah. What do you think? Don't you think so? You don't think we can grow some wood out of these? They are wood, but isn't with, with, with God everything possible? Yeah. Should we see what happens? Yeah. yeah, we should see what happens. So, all right. Now, <clears throat> what do you got there? The next part of what we talked about today is keep our faith growing. How do we keep our faith growing? Addison, how do you do this? You're doing something right now. What are you doing? You're sitting, but where are you? You're at church. So coming to church, does that keep our faith growing? What do you guys do? What did we do before this happened? What did Pastor David have us do in the beginning? What did we all fold our hands and we, we prayed? All right. What's the book that we read? It's called the... Okay, does that keep our faith growing? Yes, yes. Now, in the book of Proverbs, verse 25, excuse me, 11 through 25, it says, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Any idea what that means? Landon, what does that mean? Well, kind of, but if you're generous, so Landon, if you had two candy bars and Addison said, I want one of those candy bars, what are you going to tell her? You can have one. Oh, boy, a good answer. You get an extra candy bar. Now, with that being said, we're about done. So at the end today, when we get done with church, we want you to all come back over and we're going to we're going to plant our little gardens, and we're going to monitor them over the summer, and we're going to see what happens with all the stuff we grow. What should we do with everything that we grow? What should we do with all the vegetables? Let's look. Cook them? Should we eat them? What if we gave them away? Huh? Could we, you think that'd be a good idea? Okay. You want this one? All right. Good job, Carver. All right, let's fold our hands and have a little prayer, and then I got something for you. All right. So let's say, Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for all you give us. 
Thank you for all you give us. Bless our little gardens so we can bless others. Amen. All right, guys, I have some things for you here. Oh, yeah, see, you were all excited. <laughs> oh, boy. First reading is from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. I'd like to just share a, a little bit about uh, this text. Um, I went with Acts chapter 2, and for Pentecost Sunday, you have uh, rather uh, lengthy scriptures. And so I wanted to just share with you uh, about this one in particular. It's Pentecost Sunday, and uh, as you can see, uh, those of you who uh, had read in your closet uh, put it on to share and to lift up that. You see the pyramids on the altar and lectern and baptismal font are red as well to symbolize the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples and upon those who are with him and upon us as the church. The Gospel of Luke and Acts are written by the same author. Uh, They are kind of a sequel. Acts is the sequel to Luke's Gospel. All that you are about to hear then in the scripture here takes place 50 days, that's where Pentecost comes from, 50 days after Jesus' death and resurrection, and the disciples and close followers of Jesus are back in Jerusalem, okay? So today, according to Luke, that first chapter 1, verse 1, they were all in one accord in one place. So all of the disciples and followers of Jesus were all in one place. 
Earlier in Acts, Luke told us that the disciples had gone back to the upper room where it had been, they had celebrated the Lord's Supper. And they were staying there. And there were 11 of them who were named. But he also mentions the women who were with them and others that are not named. And Luke goes on to say, in all, there were 120 believers. Now, my image of the upper room was, you know, a cozy meal with 12 uh, and Jesus. And uh, so this room may have been much bigger or much more crowded, one of the two. So you have the setting here. It's after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. It's 50 days since that took place. They are back now in Jerusalem. They are in the upper room together with the disciples and other believers. A big room and a rather large crowd. Then Luke records what took place that day, for which I'll invite you to stand. This is from the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. And then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Sons, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. If you're ever asked to uh, read scripture on Pentecost, uh, find an excuse. (laughs) Let's, uh, Let's begin with prayer, if you would. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your spirit. When the water was poured on us in baptism and the words were said, the spirit was within us. We thank you, Lord, that that gift of the spirit brings faith to each of us. And in hearing scripture and in hearing the explanation, Lord, it is only through the Holy Spirit that we come to understand and believe. So help us to believe today. In your name we pray. Amen. 
So you understand the setting in which uh, the uh, Acts 2 is written about. You understand where the disciples are. And then this phenomenal event uh, that took place that is described by them. All the Jews were in Jerusalem that particular day because it was a festival day. It was 50 days after um, Passover had taken place. And it was called the, uh, the Festival of Shavuot. And that is the celebration of the wheat harvest in Israel. They were celebrating not only the harvest, but also the law and the Torah. Moses on Mount Sinai and the Jews all over the world would have been in Jerusalem if they could for the festival. In our Christian tradition, we see this as the coming of the Holy Spirit that was promised to us by Jesus as the advocate who would be sent to us that Jesus would be present with us in the Holy Spirit and that that would come and be amongst all believers. Today we look at this as a way for us to not only celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit, but to renew our spirits as well. And to do so by proclaiming the wonders of God that we ourselves have seen. Well, With that thought in mind, um, I thought it would be good that I share just a little bit of uh, um, about, I suppose it's history in some respects, but uh, it's my experience here at Peace. See, when I I first came here, I was reminded of this just a couple Sundays ago when somebody uh, got up and made their faith statement uh, Uh, for Graduate Sunday, somebody. And in that, they happened to mention uh, how it was that um, peace, one of the signature pieces about us is that we enjoy our fellowship together. And with that, we often gather around food, and most specifically around treats, And to be even more specific, often around cake. Now, not all of you know that story entirely, so I thought I would share it with you here this morning just as an introduction. Peace has developed healthier eating habits. We now do cupcakes. But back in the first year when I was here, I came in and I'm observing all this fellowship that took place. It was before the addition of the fellowship hall was added. And so we just had a little bit of the kitchen there and we had big giant square tables that were out there. And people would leave the sanctuary after worship and they would go out and get a treat and coffee and uh, lemonade and they would sit down at those tables and they would have fellowship. Only a few people had something to do, then they left and went out the door. And for the rest of the folks, they were together around those tables. Fellowship. With that, the coffee flowed, the fellowship grew, people shared and laughed and got caught up with each other and cared for each other. You know, right? Fellowship. It's a church word we use probably more often, but it means being together. You see, we knew what Luke was explaining there in that first uh, verse of this, where he said they were all of one accord in one place. 120, as he described it, all crammed in the upper room waiting for that. And for us here, it was 120 maybe out in the commons, round tables, having a cup of coffee and sharing that. It was about that time, this time of the year, for us, when the whole cake myth was first developed, okay, and it is a myth, of course. After worship, during fellowship, they served cake uh, in the month of May. The first Sunday was Graduate Sunday, it was Mother's Day, and then it was Confirmation Sunday. Cake, cake, and cake. Following that, though, uh, people got to kind of catch on to the announcements that were made saying something like, well, following worship today, Peace Cafe will be celebrating the last Sunday of Sunday School with... Thank you. We are welcoming new members this Sunday with... 
and cake for birthdays and anniversaries, of course, of course, and then cake on Mother's Day, Father's Day, oh, and why not, St. Patrick's Day, Groundhog's Day. <laughs> and I, I know that's an exaggeration. So now, we get a bit of a giggle whenever we mention this business of cake. Of all the Sundays, though, that we should be serving cake, it's this one. It's Pentecost. And the reason why we would serve cake today is because it's the birthday of the church. And in the traditions of birthdays, we serve cake and candles with lots of frosting and party hats and noisemakers and Facebook posts. Because today is the birthday of the church with the coming of the Holy Spirit and sending us out into the world to share this good news that we get to proclaim the wonders of what God is doing in our lives and in the lives of this church. When it comes to Pentecost and the work of the Holy Spirit, there is one thing that we get exactly right and some other things that we get wrong. Here's the one that we get right. It's our birthday. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit made Pentecost the day in which the church was born. And the evidence of that was seen in the description of the tongues of flame coming down from heaven and resting upon those who were there. The rushing of the mighty wind representing the power of the Holy Spirit. This moment amidst the fellowship of the believers all packed together, that moment empowered them to share the good news of Jesus with the world. The Holy Spirit provided everything that they needed to simply go out and proclaim in word and deed the wonders of God. What they had seen happen in their own lives, to witness, to testify, to say, I don't know about you, but this is what I believe. This is what I saw happen. This is how I felt in my heart. And they shared that with those who were all around I believe it's the same for us here at Peace. We gather today on Pentecost Sunday to worship. We gather later in fellowship. We gather in other ways, too, in VBS and in youth group. We gather to hear a Johnny Cash concert yesterday. Yes, even men's coffee group gathers, and the Holy Spirit is with us. When we are gathered as believers, the Holy Spirit does what the Holy Spirit does, and that is to empower us to witness to these incredible things that God is doing. It may seem like ordinary conversation, but at the root of it is God's good work in and amongst us. Well, you remember what happened in the Acts story. They went out and they opened the doors and the disciples went forward and began to speak. And Jews from all over the world gathered and they celebrated and they heard them speaking in their own language. They could not believe what was going on. In fact, to the point where they said, well, these guys must have been having a little, you know. And it wasn't even noon. But the outcome was that many came to believe in God through Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? You see, it wasn't their words. It wasn't their testimony. It isn't our words or our testimony. But rather, it was the power of the Holy Spirit at work. That same Spirit that is within you yet today. So, now, here are the couple things that we don't get right about Pentecost. First of all, Pentecost is not just a one-time-a-year event. I mean, yes, we celebrate it like this. But Pentecost actually is something that goes on continually in the life of the church, the renewing of the Spirit. The second thing is Pentecost is not just one big event, but it's more about relationships between people, people who sit down and listen to each other and talk with each other, people who care and and do acts of service with each other. Pentecost is the moving of the Spirit to do God's good work. And that the third thing is this, that Pentecost is not over. It's not some date way back in then and all done, because it's in you today. 
your life as you open it up to the work of the Holy Spirit will affect how and what you do in witnessing and testifying to God's good work in you. Your loving others and yourself. Your forgiving each other and yourself. The Holy Spirit is something that we trust but maybe don't understand. And here's one thing I want to leave with you. As we talk about Peace Lutheran, we're, uh, we can be prideful, right? I am, and I know I catch myself saying it. But remember this, it is not us. It is not me. It is what God is doing in and amongst us that people see. And let's always keep that to the forefront. Because in verse 41, which was not in the reading for today, Luke records that they added that day to the disciples about 3,000 souls. And how many more will come to know? Because Pentecost is here today. Amen? Amen. Well, let's stand. We're going to do some singing. Let's confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And we would like to show our appreciation to all of those who have been in Christian education and teaching this past year. Tricia, you want to come on up? And would you like a handheld mic or would you? Okay, I'll get out of your way. Good morning. Um, on behalf of the Christian Ed Committee, we would like to thank those who have donated their time and their talents to helping others grow their faith. These individuals have been involved with VBS. Bible studies, Sunday school, and various events throughout the year. Thank you to all of these people for helping others grow their faith. We have just a small token of our appreciation. And I'll read your names, and um, I'll have the boys deliver. All right, starting off, um, Tristan Johnsrud. Abby Plain, Haley Simon, Carver Schroeder, Mallory Thorson, Michaela Thorson, Audrey McClurg.
All right, and now we have Riley May, Emily Hansen, <laughs> Olivia Bauman, Brecken Miller, and now we have some adults, Adam Hansen, Sarah Hansen, Edie Hansen, Jamie Carlson, Kathy Rickenberg, Rose Vensky, Shelby Dressel, Bob Carlson and Jan Carlson, Mary Barfnick, John and Sharon Wensler, Megan Weaver, Sean and Joseph Perez, Diane Malman, Nicole Johnsrud, Karen Dressel, Wendy Ely, Stephanie Hansen, Deanne Lamel, Rachel Latito, Pastor David. Karen Latito, Jackie Cram, Heather Hewen, Ben Simon, Lily Grapple. Mark Nissen, Gladys Nissen, Colette Thorson, Jess Bauman, Tracy Hulley, Seth Junas, Junas, thank you. <laughs> and Danny Hahn. Thank you all again. You're welcome. Many people are involved in Christian education and in teaching um, and uh, many others. So God bless you all in serving like that. Uh, we want to share some Yay God moments, and while we begin that, um, we're going to try to do uh, an offering plate pass this morning, a, a little different. It's been a while since we've done it, and so just so you know, um, these are wooden plates, and we, we pass it to the person beside us, and then we put our offering in those plates. And if you already put it in at the door, just pass the plate and uh, the like, and so we'll, we'll figure it out. It's not yet, though, Jen. We're a little premature there, okay? 
So, uh, yay gods this morning. Anything we want to say thank you for or things we want to uh, lift up to the congregation? Marla? Um, I would like to say yay God for the life of my friend Mary Beth Carlson who went to heaven yesterday morning. Yeah. She was, um, she's a renowned um, pianist, musician, recording artist here in the Twin Cities, but most of all, she's a light for Christ. And our family's hearts are broken. Um, she played and Megan sang for our 25th wedding anniversary uh, back in 97. And uh, she's just, um, she had uh, been diagnosed with multiple myeloma and she had been down at Mayo Clinic since January. Uh, following um, complications from a transplant surgery. So bless her family and those that love her. And yeah. Thank you for her life. Thank you. Yay God for her life. Yeah. Just a quick congratulatory, a Watertown mayor had their graduation ceremony on Friday night. And I know we have several members um, who graduated, so a big congratulations for those students and their families. Absolutely. Yay, God, for the graduates. Yep. Brian? I just want to say yay, God, to... Um, all the people that uh, from the outreach committee that got the Mitch Hall and Tennessee Trio here yesterday for a concert tribute to Johnny Cash. Um, I thought it was absolutely amazing. This young man, 22 years old, um, what, what he brought and uh, with the three older gentlemen that were with him. Um, it, was, it was amazing. But um, this is what we do as an outreach. This is what we do as a church. And it drew a lot of people in here. Um, that uh, would probably not uh, have come for something else. But um, anyway, just uh, a shout out to um, all the folks, uh, the Outreach Committee and for this church for providing opportunities like this to the community. All right, yeah, let's hear it for the concert. <laughs> but a great turnout, so thank you everyone for putting it together. Other you guys this morning? Got one up here, Emily. Uh, yay God that I had my first show yesterday and no one got hurt, no horses got hurt. Yay God. Yay God. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, anyone else? Let me check online and see if any of those are uh, with us on live streaming on Facebook. Okay. Um, yes, we have a yay God from Carolyn um, Pollock. Um, she said, we were sad we couldn't be there in person today, but yay God for Miss Jessica and Miss Olivia. Leo loves you guys so much, and we appreciate you. Uh, thank you for teaching, and uh, thank you for all the teaching that happens at Peace. And then I'm going to do a quick one. Um, yay God for, like Heather said, uh, my daughter graduated on Friday. She's, and she survived. She's here Sunday morning. And um, while she's sitting here, Olivia also got accepted to Arizona State. And will be leaving us this fall to Arizona. So yay, God. One more. Tanner, um, Tanner, Weston, Cade, they are playing baseball again today. They won two games yesterday, and they're playing today for championships. So yay, God, for baseball. All right. Yeah, yay, God. <laughs> Anybody else have a yay, God? All right. Um, we're going to continue with our, our worship at this time then. And uh, they're going to invite the children's choir. And while the children are singing, uh, the offering will be passed.
invite you to stand if you are able. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we're mindful this day of those in amongst our congregation that are in need of comfort and healing. We lift up those folks. Uh, we lift up to you Greg and the Pollock family and baby Charlie, for Chris and Troy and Tim and Robert and Renata and Carol and Maggie. For our friends and family that surround us, we, we remember before you today the needs of Keith and Eric and Jill of Sherry and Jim and Chris and Charlie, for Leroy today and Jim and Albert and Kate. Surround Jennifer and Brian and Jennifer with your love, Gail and Mary Lou and Kyle, who continue to bring your comfort to Marlene and Rick and Karen, Mary Beth and John and Jim. Lord, for all those who are grieving this day, we just lift them before you that you might comfort their hearts with the good news that the resurrection is true and that life everlasting is in you. We thank you, too, for partner congregations uh, all around the world and for our friends in Cuba. Bless them as they continue to grow their ministry. We give special thanks today, Lord, for those who are serving in the military and for law enforcement and first responders. Bless them, Lord, in their difficult jobs that they perform. Keep them safe. And we ask, too, Lord, that you bless our, our brothers and sisters in Christ at the other churches in our community. Continue to lift them up with the Holy Spirit that they, too, will reach out and share the good news. For all these prayers, Lord, both spoken and unspoken, we trust and place in your care today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. Yeah.
We'll see you next week. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We will.